By now, everyone has heard of the tragic passing and sudden passing of Suzanne Summers. She is really a beautiful woman where all her friends really had nothing but wonderful things to say about her. Her children love her. And this video is going to be just highlighting her career, highlighting her wonderful legacy. We're going to talk about her childhood. Tragically, we're also going to talk about the time that she alleged that she was poisoned and the doctor that found out that she was poisoned ended up you know dead so that's kind of a crazy conspiracy i'm gonna talk about that also but first hey friend welcome to my channel crane allude where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars through history if you're not yet subscribed please be sure to do so and if you're already subscribed please turn on your notification bell so you never miss an upload without further ado let's jump into her childhood so suzanne marie mahoney was born on october 16th 1946 in the humble town of san bruno california she was the third child in a modest irish american catholic family her mother marian elizabeth worked at as a medical secretary while her father Francis Mahoney earned a living as a laborer and gardener. Life was far from easy for Suzanne. Her father struggled with alcoholism which often led to violent episodes. The fear that he might hurt her or take her life was a constant in her life. Suzanne's bedwetting problems which persisted until she was 12 only added to the abuse she endured from her father. In her candid bestseller Keeping Secrets published in 1988 Suzanne details the trials and tribulations of growing up with an alcoholic father. Every day he would return home from his job at a brewery, initially friendly and happy, but as the alcohol took hold, his demeanor would darken. He would lash out at Suzanne and her siblings, hurling insults and criticism at them and their mother. One night stands out in Suzanne's memory. Her father entered her room in a fit of rage, ripping apart her clothes. Terrified and angry, she struck him on the head with a tennis racket, causing him to bleed out. After her mother rushed him to the hospital, Suzanne spent hours cleaning up the aftermath, erasing any trace of what had happened. And to escape her father's abuse, she would hide in her closet almost every night, seeking solace in the quiet darkness. Suzanne's schooling was no less challenging. She attended Mercy High School in Burlingame, California, but she had learning difficulties due to dyslexia and the sleepless nights caused by her father's rage made it difficult for her to focus. She did, however, shine in school productions, landing the lead role in a production of HMS Pinafore, but her school life was marred when she was expelled at 14 for writing suggestive notes to a boy. At 17, her father tore her prom dress off her body and told her she was nothing and despite the hardships in 1964 Suzanne graduated from Cappuccino High School in San Bruno California. She won the best doll award for her role in the senior musical Guys and Dolls and played a significant part in organizing her class senior ball. She briefly attended Lone Mountain College but left in 1965 when she discovered she was pregnant. This period of her life was marked by low self-esteem and financial struggles. She was even arrested for check fraud and her car was impounded. As they grew older Older, Suzanne's siblings fell into the same pattern of alcoholism that had plagued their father. And despite escaping the clutches of alcoholism herself, Suzanne faced numerous personal trials, including an unplanned pregnancy at a young age and a subsequent marriage. Financial instability in an extramarital affair further complicated her life. Drawing inspiration from her own experiences, Suzanne dedicated her life to raising awareness about addiction and its impacts on family. She founded the Suzanne Summers Institute for the Effect of addiction on families and was recognized for her work with several awards, including the Humanitarian Award from the National Council on Alcoholism and the Distinguished Achievement and Public Service Award from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Beyond her personal achievements, Suzanne served as the National Honorary Chairperson of the National Association for Children of Alcoholics and was the first non-medical professional appointed to the Board of Directors of the American Psychiatric Foundation. She also served on the Advisory Council for the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service Administration under the Secretary of Health and Human Services. Suzanne shares her experiences and insights on her blog, SuzanneSummers.com, stating, addiction is a singular experience. No one can save the addict but themselves. The only help you can offer is love, end quote. Her life story serves as both a testament to her resilience and a beacon of hope for others facing similar struggles. Before we hop into her career and rise to fame, let's 
take a quick intermission to lighten the mood a bit before it gets all gloomy again. Let's get into some of her beauty secrets because our girl had many and she was so into her fitness and physical presentation. A beauty regimen is so important as you age, she said, because you want to present your best face not only to yourself and your husband or your family, but to the world, she told Yahoo. And to not take care of yourself means you don't value yourself. I comb my hair every day and I get dressed every day and most days put on a little eyeliner just to open the eyes. It's part of my self-esteem to present the best face that I am capable of presenting, end quote. Every night, she whips up an anti-aging cocktail of her own products for her face and sticks to that routine religiously. I put on liquid oxygen, ageless serum, glutathione serum, and COQ10 moisturizer, she told Andy Cohen in an interview. She told Us Magazine, my beauty secret is my face master, which slows down the aging process. My secret to staying ageless is bioidentical hormones, end quote. One of her favorite ways to unwind is with a simple Epsom salt bath at night while she's kicking back in the bath. She likes to multitask with a coconut oil mask, using it as a treatment for extra hydration in her hair and on her face. She used to get seven to eight hours of sleep a night. And though she did get failures in the past, she never got them again because she said it started to move and kind of distorted her face a little bit. So she was never into that again and went the natural organic way. She also had a garden and, you know, grew her own fruits and created her own organic products to use on her face. In 2001, Summers was diagnosed with breast cancer, so she decided to make some lifestyle changes. She said, when I heard these three words, you have cancer, I remember thinking, what have I done in my diet and my lifestyle to play host to this terrible disease? I decided to eat like my life depended on it, she says. I stopped eating all processed foods. The actress started her day with a green smoothie loaded with kale, spinach, apple, ginger, and other produce. For lunch, she tried to stay low carb, with a protein and vegetables like salad with chicken, goat cheese, and fennel top with olive oil. For dinner, she enjoys a wide variety of options, but a dish she likes to make often is marinated lamb with rosemary, garlic, olive oil, and red pepper flakes. She pairs that with red yams infused with organic butter, and her favorite cheat meal is tequila. <laughs> Summer says that her active lifestyle over the years had allowed her to remain agile and avoid bone loss. Summers credit her lifestyle and balanced hormones to her healthy sex life with her husband. She is a bubbly personality, full of life and laughter. Life would hit her hard, but she always bounced back. She stated that the best advice that she received was from her mother and it stated, you have to learn to accept criticism, end quote. Leave a dove or a white heart in the comments for her. May she continue to rest in peace. With that said, let's get into her career. So let's take a trip down memory lane to the late 60s and early 70s when Suzanne Somers first started dipping her toes in the acting world. She started out small, popping up here and there in little roles in movies and making guest appearances on talk shows, all while promoting her book of poetry. Things really started to heat up for Suzanne when she landed a spot on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, but it was her role as Chrissy Snow on Three's Company that made her a household name. Chrissy was your typical blonde, a bit ditzy but lovable, working as an office secretary Secretary alongside her were co-stars John Ritter and Joyce DeWitt playing two single women living with a single man who pretended to be gay to trick their landlord. This comedy hit was an instant success, but things started to get rocky during the show's fifth season in 1980. Suzanne, who was making 30,000 per episode, demanded a raise to 150,000 to match what Ritter was making. She also wanted a slice of the show's profits. ABC wasn't having it, offering her only a $5,000 raise. That made her kind of upset, so she skipped out on a couple of episodes, blaming it on a broken rib. The drama didn't end there. ABC decided to cut her screen time down to just a minute per her episode showing her character calling from her parents house after letting her go and canceling her contract Suzanne sued ABC for two million claiming they damaged her reputation the lawsuit ended with Suzanne only getting 30,000 for an episode they didn't pay her for future rulings also sided with the network and producers fast forward to 1983 Suzanne signed a deal with Columbia Pictures television through her Hamill Summers production Suzanne Summers had a whirlwind of a life filled with scandal drama and hard in 1965, at the tender age of 19, she tied the knot with Bruce Summers, as stated, and soon after, they welcomed a baby boy, Bruce Jr. But the fairy tale didn't last, and by 68, they were signed in divorce papers. With a young son to support and no man in her life, Suzanne took a gig as a prize model on the Anniversary Game, a popular game show hosted by the charming Alan Hamill. Despite the fact that Hamill was already married, sparks flew between them. Alan offered her a brownie 
an edible on their first date to help shed her inhibitions. Summers say it wasn't a Bill Cosby type of thing. She said, I dived in. I remember making the choice. I thought, well, I've been with very few men in my life. I've never been to a man's hotel room. I've never had sake. I've never eaten a pot brownie. I think I'm just going to do it all, end quote. Hey, it was the 60s and it was San Francisco. A pot brownie was nothing in San Francisco in the 60s, end quote. But love prevailed and in 77, Suzanne and Alan tied the knot. However, life wasn't all sunshine and roses for our blonde beauty. In 71, the little boy, her son, was hit by a car, sending Suzanne spiraling into therapy to heal their emotional wounds. Health scares also plagued her, hyperplasia in her 20s, skin cancer in her 30s. It seemed like she couldn't catch a break. The new millennium brought more bad news. In April 2000, doctors discovered stage two breast cancer hiding in Suzanne's body. They operated immediately, removing the cancerous lump and blasting her with radiation therapy. In a bold move in 2018, Suzanne underwent an experimental stem cell therapy to regrow her lost breasts, showcasing her fearless spirit in the face of adversity. According to the Desert Sun, Summer's most difficult hurdle to overcome was her suspicion detailed in her book that she was poisoned at a hotel full of pharmaceutical salespeople attending a November 2008 convention. She said Desert Regional Medical Center diagnosed her with a fungus known as Valley Fever, but Summers sent her test results to several alternative doctors. Dr. Nick Gonzalez of New York conducted a radionics test on a strand of her hair and found traces of a substance used in surgeries called succinyl choline. ABC did a special on succinylcholine and called it the assassin's perfect drug because it dissipates in the body, Summers said. Only place it remains would be in the hair, which is how he found it. I think they tried to take me out and my body was too strong because of the way I take care of myself. But what they did get was my spirit. This depression came on me in a way that I didn't even realize it was happening. I would just cry for no reason. I couldn't find my joy. I questioned my whole life. I questioned our relationship. I never had that happen to me." End quote. Gonzalez Alice died of a heart attack, the doctor that performed the test on her and found the substance. He died in a heart attack in 2015, and online conspiracy theorists suspected that he was taken out as part of a movement against alternative medicine. And Summers wouldn't address that, but said, I do think what happened to Nick is tragic, end quote. But fate had one more blow to deal. In 2020, Suzanne took a tumble from a private tram leading to her home, fracturing her hip in the process. Tragically, Suzanne passed away in her Palm Springs home home on October 15, 2023, just one day shy of her 77th birthday. Her old nemesis, breast cancer, had returned earlier in the year, claiming her life. Suzanne Summers, a woman of strength, spirit, and scandal, will forever be remembered for her tenacity, her courage, and her larger-than-life personality and that big, beautiful smile. This is all I have for this video. If you like the music you're listening to, the link is in the description. Don't forget to leave a heart or a dove in the comments for her. And also, comment below who else would you guys like to see. I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time.